Hello again, my friends. How are you today? Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This week, we continue our study through the Gospel as recorded by St. Luke, a few paragraphs down from last week, chapter 19. Here we see Jesus weeping over Jerusalem. Jesus, although I'm sure he cried other times, is only recorded doing so two other times, the most famous of which is at Lazarus' death. Keep listening to hear why he does so and why we should pay attention to it. There are lots of good things happening at St. Mark Church in Bemidji, and I'd like you to join us if you're interested. Are you confused after listening to the parables or other parts of God's Word? Come join us at church. Have a little bundle of joy that's out of control? We'll bring them to our youth or junior youth group. Want to know that you're not praying alone? Join our prayer club and talk right to the Almighty God with us about anything and everything. If you have questions on how and when to join these and many other events, email me at john.kirk at stmarksbemidji.org. I'd also like to engage in just a little shameless promotion before we get started. This podcast has a tiny following and the algorithms don't even notice us. But if you or someone you know could benefit from a frequent dose of God's Word in this format, consider sharing it with them. We're easy enough to find on podcastindex.org, Apple Podcasts, or Google Podcasts by typing St. Mark Bemidji in the search bar. And if you're so inclined, hit the subscribe button on your podcast app so you don't have to keep looking us up every day. This podcast is published four times weekly, three times during the week. We feature a short devotional like the one you're about to hear. And on Sundays, we replay a Sunday sermon from our church or on occasion, another Wells church. We are currently going through our daily prayer series on the Gospels and the Book of Acts. Each day, we take a quick but a thoughtful look into a verse or two of one of these five potent accounts of the earthly ministry of Jesus or of the early church. So, turn off the coffee bean grinder for five minutes and let us ponder the word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Luke chapter 19 reads, When Jesus approached Jerusalem, he saw the city and wept over it, saying, If you had known in this day, even you, the things which make for peace, but now they have been hidden from your eyes. For the days will come upon you when your enemies will set up a barricade around you and surround you and hem you in on every side and tear you down to the ground, you and your children within you. And they will not leave one stone upon another in you because you did not know the time of your visitation. This is my text. In the name of Jesus, amen. Jerusalem, Israel, learned the truth of what Jesus said. Disrespect for the Word of God is one of the greatest sins. Israel had often in the past done so. The northern kingdom ignored God's warning and was destroyed. The southern kingdom ignored God's warnings to repent, and they were taken into Babylonian captivity. Often God has been long-suffering and spared them. Still, they were unwilling to tolerate the divine truth preached by Christ, and crouching at the door was their destruction, only forty years, give or take, after Jesus' resurrection. When we act, carrying on just like the Jews did, who cared more for their businesses, trade, making money, and the day-to-day -day involvement in politics, family squabbles, and the elimination of the Romans, they had little time for the salvation of their souls because... They would not listen or receive the eternal life and peace Christ came to bring. And their excuses are all quite familiar to us. Well, we'll listen to Jesus when he advances our business, gets us a job, health care, security from our enemies, uh, uh, a safe place for our money, and uh, that our property might not be in jeopardy. But they could not, because John 11 what are we to do, they cried out, for this man performs many signs. If we let him go on like this, everybody will believe in him, and the Romans will come and take away both our place and our nation. We who have heard the gospel message of the riches of God, redemption from sin, reconciliation with God, peace forever with Christ in his kingdom, they often become dulled in hearing. We sit back and take our ease as if on the one hand all is well, and on the other hand, 
And there's nothing we can do about the state of affairs anyway. When we ought to trust Christ in his word, gladly hear and learn it, confess it before others, and earnestly pray that God would continue to grant us peace. We ought pray fervently for God to extend his kingdom everywhere, to use us to confess the name of Christ whenever and wherever he gives us the opportunity. All we ever hear elsewhere is to throw more laws at the problem, throw more money at the problem, throw more troops at the problem, before we throw up our hands in exasperation and despair. Why? We have Christ's own promise, and that cannot fail. Pray to God to throw more word of God at it. In the name of Jesus, amen. That's all there is for today, but we are so happy you took a few moments out of your busy day to listen to God's Word with us. Please consider subscribing to our podcast to hear more devotions like this, Monday through Friday, and to hear our Sunday sermons as well. We also cordially invite you to join us for church every week at 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. on Sunday mornings. If you would like more information about our church and its ministry, please visit our website at www.stmarksbemidji.org.